Subarus and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That is our 2014 Subaru. It's a big Outback, I guess, with a 2.5. Uh, it needs a little TLC, and by that I mean it needs a front wheel bearing, a rear wheel bearing, four sparky plugs, and it needs the exhaust fix, so let's get cracking. So the fella brought this thing in the other day. Get my box of goodies here. And uh, so the exhaust getting loud. And I noticed that this flange, or what used to be a flange, is MIA. Uh, muffler still looks good, so the easiest thing to do is just chop it off and put in one of these little guys. Uh, if you want to fix it the proper way, you can buy the front pipe here, and you can buy a new muffler. It will cost you hundreds of dollars, or you can buy one of these for about 10 bucks. And then what uh, I typically see here is we put this in, cut it off, put a sleeve in, and this will last until the front flange rots off. When the front flange rots off, usually the rest of the pipe is rotted, then you just do the whole thing. So this will get you by until, you know, several years. So that's what we're gonna do. Stick it on, you can clamp it, you can weld it, you can do whatever you want there. Um, I'll make a decision once we cut it off and see what we have to work with. All right, cover your eyes. Start getting pinched in there a little bit, so we'll let's hit her from the back side. Once we get most of the way through, yeehaw! There's one half, and then we just got to get this half off. Should be a little easier. Boy, you're going about cockeyed there, fella. Good. So this is a Walker number 41940. It should be a two inch ID ID. ID ID, but I see she looks a little bit rough. I don't think she's gonna slip. And I'm pretty near certain that when I measured this old pipe here, it was two inch. And this says right on it, two inch ID ID. Let me see if I was wrong or this connector's wrong. I'll tell you, I've been wrong before. That is two inch right on the money. Two inch. And of course, we just cut it off that, and that is two inch right on the nose. Now, let's see what this thing is. And this thing is two inch right on the money. We might have to open that up just a whisker because it just barely doesn't fit, particularly on this side here. And this is a four inch connector, so it's going to slide you know, a fair amount over each one. So if you choose to clamp it, uh, that'll be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna open this up a bit. Now oh, the old exhaust stretcher. Now this one, this adapter usually goes in two inch, but because this isn't opened up quite round, it's not going in. So we're gonna see if we can round her off a little. The side of the pipe is quite dented. I think we'll be good now. We can smash this one in. We'll be okay. So, pretty simple tool. Has the uh, little collets that go on there, and then as you tighten it up, they expand. Now, we could start with this one, but this tends to oblong the pipe quite a bit because we would be at the maximum stretchage. enough. I only went in. That's going to be way too much, Philip. I'm going to go make sure it fits. So that side fits beautiful. We're going to do the same thing here. Open up a little. We just, let's see, we just got to get it just a whisker. Take that ding out of 
that pipe if we can. Bing bong. Just a little. Let's go see if it works. Fit and and fit. So we're done. That'll work good. We'll save the day. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking I can't get up there with my welder. Let's we'll let pipe down a little bit. We'll tack it on, and then we'll. Let the whole shebang down. What's up, Miss Lowe? Got some questions for you. And I've got answers. Miss Lowe, what's that? Miller time, just chit chatting there. I uh, cleaned up the pipe a little. Put a pair of vice grips on there. Put my ground on those. We'll get it tacked. Oh, that's so tacky. Missed. Hit it. Got it. Couple more. Right, that should stay now. Hopefully. And then what we'll do, this bottom one I suppose I could just weld right in place. Top one's gonna be a little harder to get to, so maybe I'll just fry that one on while I'm here. And then we'll take the hangers out, let it down a little bit, and get to the parts we can't get on there. Oh, 
right in my way. Oh, I think that looks good. Maybe. Get it all. Oh, I got y'all now. I think everything's happy. Put my hat on, I'll be happy. Cover up my gray hair. So if you want this to last a really long time, you can always take some uh, like barbecue grill paint, some high temp paint, shoot it a little bit. I don't think I have any checking around here, but that is something you could do. But like I mentioned in the beginning that this repair will likely last as long as the front flange on these Subarus. And then when that goes, then you just buy the whole kit and buoy. So I got lucky, I did find some engine paint. Oh boy. So we're just gonna wipe her off with a little brake clean of the non-chlorinated type before we get that comment. So just shine her up a little bit here. Then we'll give her a little two to some paint and this sucker will last long as it lasts, guaranteed. Problem with paint can sitting around, it really doesn't want to spray. We got the nozzle all cleaned out, now she's spraying. It's even gray, Ford gray, I think the color of it is. So we'll give her a little toot here. I'm getting all over the car. Oh boy. Nancy. There we go. It's just a matter of getting the rubber dongers back in here. Tweak them up out of the way. But you know what? I'm wondering if we should just take them off the top one first. That would probably be a whole lot easier. At least this one. They're kind of a pain to get to when they're in the car. There, take the whole kitten kabooey. I think I've already used the word kitten kabooey. <laughs> but we'll, we'll now has it empty. It's not empty, you can hear it. It just doesn't want to spray anymore. And one, two, three. Oh, almost made it in the garbage can. WD-40, not a sponsor. <laughs> Oh, you can't even see anyways. There we have it folks. So that's what it looks like when it's all in and finished and welded and painted. And uh, the only other rubber I took down was this one up here. And then there's one at the back of the muffler that lives up in there. I don't know, it might be too dark for you to see. And then of course the one here at the end of the muffler. Let it down. Like I say, you don't have to weld it in. If you don't have a welder, just solves all that baby and put it in. And then, you know, it goes over the pipe enough to where you can clamp it on both sides. And the other flange I'm talking about that has a tendency to rot off on the Subies is this one up here. So these things get really crusty. And at that point you can, you know, you probably shouldn't sleeve this one because this is where it moves, technically. Uh, I've seen people, you know, cut these and sleeve these, not saying I've done it myself. I may have or I may have it. But at that point, when this one rots off, you can either get a repair flange, which will need to be welded on, or you get one of those clamp of flanges, something like that. But typically once this rots out, that's usually when we do the whole thing. All right, folks, so that's it. Uh, fixing the rotted out exhaust flange on the old Subaru. Uh, this will work on a lot of other cars too. Uh, you can do it at Subarus, Hondas, Toyotas. Uh, they like to use this flange back by the muffler. They rot out and just chop it off. Get yourself a repair sleeve uh, or a, a little coupler that come four inch various sizes, IDs and ODs, all different kinds. You go around Walker Exhaust website and you can see what different couplers they make. So uh, 
that's it. You want to see more on this Subaru, click over here on this video. We're going to go ahead and do the spark plugs, move on to the wheel bearings. Why don't you guys move on down to the comment box, leave a question, comment, criticism, concern. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.